I did this to build something on my own with my fucking brother. You're the only family I got left, for real. Where you go, I go. That's it. I don't care about the world, Anya. I care about you. Now she knows how it feels. I want all the smoke. What's up, power fans of YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another power video. In this video, I'll be talking about who Tariq was actually talking to on the phone and give you reasons why it wasn't Tommy, as I see many people projecting. I'll also be talking about why this spin-off was actually named Ghost. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you're welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share. Most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. In my last video before the finale was aired, I stated that if the Tahares want Norma to feel their pain, the first thing is to kill Anya because killing Norma first will be way too simple and too easy for Norma. And I'm glad Diana brought my theory to life on the best way they should revenge on Norma before taking her out. Now she knows how it feels. There was no way the writers would have taken out Norma just like that without equating the grievance level with her and the Tahares. <laughs> And it was just right for us to see Norma also heartbroken first. Not only that, but giving the Tahares the pleasure to watch her go through it like they also did before King kills her at the end. Now, I don't know how you all feel about the last episode, but I think we've got some happy ending for once. Something that is very unusual with power. Now, let's start with the title of the spin-off, Ghost. I personally was hoping and a lot of you were equally hoping that Ghost would pop up at the end. And if not, at least we should be able to get the meaning or reason behind the ghost spin-off. But I think they somehow made it make sense at the end by making Tariq get to the top and all threats gone. Norma is gone, Monet is gone, Kata is equally gone, leaving Tariq as the last man standing. We have also seen how Tariq map out his operation plans and ready to move by keeping his family safe and out of the business, his friends running the pipeline, and he himself acting like a ghost. Now, we all know when Ghost was dealing, he had a double life, one in the game, and one out of the game. Question is, can Tariq play his life as ghost and a civilian at the same time? Now, this brings me to the end of the episode and the irony that they place in there. I've seen a lot of people stating that Tommy called Tariq for help, hence, there will be a crossover to Chicago, etc. Yes, usually Tommy comes from Chicago to make an appearance all the time, so it won't be wrong for Tariq to make an appearance in Chicago, right? Well, as a one-way call, I believe most of the theories were based on some few lines that were in Tariq's statement. Like, I haven't seen you in a minute. Yes, it's been long since Tariq saw Tommy. Then, all the smoke. We are family for life. Which we all believe is Tommy's code of communication. I want all the smoke. Well, I must say that it is not far-fetched and it could be right that that was Tommy on the call. But there is equally something missing which is how Tariq speaks to Tommy. Under no circumstances will Tariq pick Tommy's call without saying Uncle Tommy. So Uncle Tommy, she's all I got, eh? Yeah, Uncle Tommy. It could also be that they just intentionally omitted that in the script so that we can all be assuming and having these theories of who it could be. Now, what if there is another reason for that teaser that no one is thinking about or has thought about? Then again, I'm not disputing the fact that there could be another spin-off or multiple spin-offs. But what if the ending scene is just the irony of Tariq's scene with Chinedu, where Tariq was proposing to move his weight and operate as a ghost? After today, you ain't even gotta see my face ever again. Look, the machine is ready to go as soon as I say go. After that, I'm basically a ghost. Yeah, a ghost. Meanwhile, he's there running around agreeing to smoke some people. So tell them niggas to bring the smoke. We'll come lay him the fuck out. Now, we all know that the moment Terry starts to involve in wars and raids, it can potentially risk him getting known and all that, which can also bring heat back on him. So what if the ending scene was actually telling us that Tariq saying that he'll operate as if he's nowhere or like a ghost? but the game is actually going to make him play by some rules when need be. So for some reason, the Tommy call didn't really sit well with me that much, even though it's a good theory, but that is my opinion though. But here is why I say so. We all remember when Tariq was at war with Monet and wanted help, right? He asked Tommy for help and he said it wasn't his war to fight. Besides, in New York, he is dead, right? You proved that by having my fucking back. Ah, uh, Tariq, this ain't my war. Plus, in New York, I'm already dead. My question is, why would Tommy need help, especially one that sounds like a war, and call Tariq all the way from New York to Chicago? 
Has Tommy finally accepted his nephew to be in the game enough to work together? Maybe Tommy might use Tariq's help with his smartness, but for him to come to Chicago for them to fight some war, it's a bit nah for me. And do we believe Tommy will ever find himself in trouble and his only option is Tariq? We saw what happened to Liliana. Will Tommy be willing to risk Tariq too? Considering the distance between as well, it will take Tariq approximately 14 hours 12 minutes by road to get to Chicago. So what kind of trouble could Tommy be having to wait for 14 hours backup from Tariq who is coming all the way from New York? Let me know what you also think in the comment section below. I am not saying the Tommy theory can't be true, but what if we are looking at all this in a wrong direction simply because we want to see it that way? What if it's just a fast forward on how Tariq is running the machine and solving issues that are popping up in between? And what if it's Braden he was talking to? What if something is going wrong with Braden's operation and he now feels the need to call Tariq for help? I know some of you will say Tariq made the family for life statement. Yes, Tariq and Brennan have been calling each other brothers. I did this to build something on my own with my fucking brother. They both refer to each other as family at some point. Even Brennan considered Tariq as the only family he has left. You're the only family I got left, for real. Where you go, I go. That's it. So it won't be far-fetched if Tariq made such family for life statement referring to Brennan. Now consider this. His demeanor when he was speaking. His choice of straight to the point words feels like someone who is speaking with authority over the person on the other side of the call. Tariq sounded like the boss and the one in charge who has the solution to everything. So for me, I think this has to do with the operating system he laid down to push Chinedu's drugs. Also, I strongly feel the season ended the way it did just to show that Tariq was worthy of the name Ghost even though he seemed to sleep in episode 9. But he was able to redeem himself in episode 10 where everything fell in place for him. So conclusively, the show was named Ghost because Tariq sailed through it all just to end up like his father. So for me, that was what I think the whole concept of the spin-off was about. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. And like I said, I reiterate, I'm not saying the Tommy theory is wrong. It would be nice to see some crossovers to Chicago, even possible seeing Kane in Chicago now that he's on the run. So I am not saying the Tommy theory, it is wrong. I'm just saying that what if, what if is the keyword. Let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Was the episode disappointing for you? Was it as you expected? Has Tariq in his father's street name Ghost? And has he ended up better than his father? Tariq ended up as the new Ghost. Was that enough? Let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, I must be honest, I don't know why the writers make most of the characters very indecisive. From Tariq to Afi to the Tahades. One minute Tariq wanted to be out of the game, then later he said he wanted back in. Just think about it for one fucking second. Just imagine life outside of this game that we're fucking stuck in. Just imagine us just living like, like two normal college kids for once. I know some of you will say Ghost did the same thing, but when it comes to Ghost, situations drag him back in the game unlike Tariq. Then the Tahares, especially Diana. Diana has been singing one song for years now, even from Lorenzo's time that she wants out and she wants to go to school. Ma, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm having a baby. I'm not selling drugs for the fucking NYPD. When she got pregnant, she totally wants even Tariq out of the game. Now, we all agree she turned after she lost her pregnancy and she has to do what she has to do to avenge her lost baby, right? Now, Monet is dead and to think everyone will have their freedom to choose their desired path in life. Diana just gave us every reason to think that she wants to sit on the family throne and become the next Monet and a queen pin. And I'm like, Diana, now is the time to go be some professor. The game is over, but no, Diana just realized the Colombiana in her all of a sudden. Trust me, if I were to predict what Diana would do if she had her freedom, I would have even end up wrong cause. I personally for once thought she would now go legit and create her own family. But trust me, we just have a new money all over again. But I'm leaving it to you. Let me know what you also think in the comment section as well. Can Diana rebuild the business? Do you think she has what it takes to be in Monet's shoes? Drop your thoughts and theories in the comment section below. Then FA2. Saving all these monies for her program and just giving it to Kin was very crazy. Saying that once she was able to make it, she can make it again. Well, that was sweet of her by the way because Kin really needed the money. But I don't know why the writers make most of the characters very indecisive. But anyway, that is what gave us a very good show. Now let's talk about Kane and how he disappeared like Tupac's story. From now, I think Kane will have to be using another name far away from New York. But Davis did a great job by pinning everything on Noma. And not only that, he he was able to get his law license back. It's been a good run. 
It was a journey with you all, especially my regular viewers. I can't thank you all enough for holding me down and staying with me throughout my trying times. Thank you for making this space a big family. Brazing Canaan, I believe, is next and I can't wait to give you all the usual breakdown and analysis as always. And if you want me to look at some other TV shows, you might as well leave the titles in the comment section and I'll bring you analysis on those while we wait for Raising Canaan. Thank you all very much once again. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new. Most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Let's have a conversation around this. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.